Is it possible that a supernatural prayer that my guest heard from heaven will open you up to a higher level of God's presence and his supernatural power? My guest says yes. Next. Sid Roth here with Warren Marcus, and uh, as the rabbis always say to me, are both of your parents Jewish? Oh, Warren, are both of your parents Jewish? Definitely. Both of my parents are Jewish, and as far as I know, all the generations were all Jewish. Warren had an outstanding career on uh, Madison Avenue as a film producer, filmmaker, uh, and uh, uh, and then you blink your eyes a few times, and he's working 700 Club, uh, uh, Jerry Falwell, Sid Roth. Uh, what's a nice Jewish guy working for all these Christian organizations? I really believe God really has for every single person. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians says that he foreknew us before the foundation of the world and has actually a calling and destiny for every one of us, but we need to step into that destiny. And so for me, I mean, God sought me because I was five years old. I'm playing with my friend outside and there's this lightning and thunderstorm starts. And he says, I'm going home, lightning, it could kill you. Then next thing, about 15 feet away, a a, a flash of lightning hits right on the ground. Well, I got up and I started crying. I ran into the house and my agnostic Jewish sister picks me up and she says, what's wrong? And I said, it's lightning, it could kill me. So she looks at me, lightning, it won't, it won't hurt you. God will protect you. So I'm, I, I never heard, you know, God? Hmm. And she goes, you can't see him, he's invisible. He lives in a place called heaven, but yet he's everywhere. So I thought, is he in my bedroom at night when it's dark? She goes, yes, he's there too. So I got more frightened of this unseen entity named God than the lightning and thunder. And I was in that room at night, it was dark, and I was so petrified. And I finally fell asleep and said, I had a dream that it was in heaven. Lightning and thunder, I was frightened. And then in the distance, I, I saw the clouds parting in a circular <laughs> fashion and the most beautiful, golden light. I didn't realize, but it was the Shekinah glory of God that I was seeing. And I was being drawn into that light. The lightning and thunder dissipated and I'm being drawn in. And I felt this incredible peace. I felt fulfillment. I mean, I wasn't scared. I felt the, the glory of God. And then these light, these beams of light came at me different colors, like rainbow, and formed a pathway towards me. And I'm being drawn in, and then I heard the most beautiful voice I ever heard. And this voice said, do not be afraid, Warren. I am your friend. I will never hurt you. And so I- well, I can feel the peace of God just as you said those oh, words. And I could still, I, I still see it vividly. I woke up and I, I went downstairs and I got to tell, mom, I saw God, she goes, what do you mean you saw God? I said, in my dream. She goes, oh, <laughs> you know, then my father comes down. He's kind of an agnostic. I said, dad, I saw God. And he goes, what? And she goes, don't worry, Charlie. He was in his dream. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then I go to kindergarten class. He says, take out crayons and draw a picture. So I tried to draw a picture of what I saw in heaven. I use a yellow crayon. I still have the picture. And I'm drawing this thing of God. And this Jewish kid next to me, Richie, he says, what's that supposed to be? I said, it's a picture. A picture of what? A picture of God. He said, you can't draw a picture of God. I said, why not? <laughs> Nobody could see God. And I said, well, I saw God and I'm continuing to, well, he got into an whole argument with me. The class starts laughing, you know, and all of a sudden the teacher says, what's going on here? He says, Warren said he saw God. And I said, I did see God. And I'm holding up the picture in my dream. And this is a picture of him. So she picks it up. She's looking at it. She's looking at me. She just thinks I'm a sugar crazy. But it did impact my life. It changed my life because I came in contact with the one true God. And here's the thing. My mother takes me to see the Ten Commandments. So I go to the movie, the Cecil B. DeMille, and I'm seeing the God of Israel parting the Red Sea, causing 10 plagues to hit our enemies, you know? And then I saw him on Mount Sinai, 
and I saw the glory that was around him and the, the finger of God writing the Ten Commandments. And I'm feeling the exact same thing I did when I had that dream in heaven. I mean, it was right, the whole place was, atmosphere was filled. And I said, wow, oh, this is incredible. But here's what happened as a little boy. I started praying to God, Sid. And you see, not everything was great in my life. My father, he was an alcoholic. His four brothers were alcoholics. And he would stay out late at the bar. He loved his family, but he, he wasn't, when he was drunk, it really didn't go well. And I found my mother, never told this to anyone, but I found my mother in the room many times crying. And when I went in there, I said, Mommy, what's wrong? And she says, nothing, Warren, I'm just sad right now. I said, Mommy, I don't want you to be sad. I laid my hand on her and I said, Oh, God of Israel, make my mommy happy again. I don't want her to be sad. And I remember my mother getting up and she put her arms around me and she says, I love you, Warren. You're so special. But here's the thing, all around me, there were kids growing up pornography, wrong sexual perversion, all kinds of stuff that was going on. My mother would take me every Saturday to the synagogue and I would go in there and I was looking for the God of Israel, the God I saw in the Ten mm -hmm. Commandments, the, the God I saw in my dream. And the people would go out for the refreshments. I'd go in the sanctuary and said, where are you, God? Show yourself to me. I want to see you. I want, I want to have your glory come in this place. Then some kids, friends of mine, took me to their churches. I went to their churches. You know what? What? Same thing there. I didn't feel the presence of God. I didn't feel the glory, you know? I didn't feel that thing. So I'm saying, where are you, God? So I go to School of Visual Arts for film to study film, motion picture, and all the people there, they're using drugs. And one guy says, you know what? This could open a way for you to really see God. Well, you see, the devil knows the trigger to hmm. try to pull us away. So I started using LSD, all kinds of drugs. Meanwhile, I, I, I graduate, I wind up on Madison Avenue, I'm doing all these high, high priced TV spots, nationally crazy stuff, you know? But I was not fulfilled. So I'm sitting in my apartment, 21 years old, and I just, I'm smoking marijuana, and I said, oh God of Israel, I can't take this anymore. I can't live this way anymore. I said, if Jesus, is truly who these Christian friends of mine are saying, that he is the promised Jewish Messiah. If he is your son, the son of God, then I want him in my heart. But if he's not, I don't want to have anything to do with him. You know what happened? The same glory that was in my dream, the same glory presence of God and the supernatural power of God came into my apartment. Then I was being filled with that. And what happened was, I started saying, I don't need this marijuana anymore. I threw a whole thing of marijuana down the toilet. I just flushed it down. There was alcohol. I just started dumping alcoholic beverages. Nobody was preaching to me and telling me you would need to do this. The holiness of God, the holiness of God was there. And then I started cracking, breaking records. My Catholic wife comes home. She said, what are you doing? I said, Jesus is in the house. God's glory is here. She really thought you were <laughs> she thought sugar. I was my sugar. And then she says, what are you doing with those records? I said, we don't need these records. I'm throwing them out. She goes, don't throw my records out. <laughs> well, you even went so far as to say he didn't even understand Judaism yes. until he began to understand the Jewish Messiah, who is the Messiah of the whole world, Jesus. Yes, and that's true because I would read the New Testament, the red letter edition. Mm -hmm. The words would pop off the, the, the pages. It was so real. And then I realized all of the writers were Jewish. This was not something from another religion. This was the, what I was supposed to learn about. Why didn't they teach me about Messiah? Why didn't they tell me about it? So I was doing that. But you know what? God started giving me a revelation, Sid. You remember Passover? Sure. growing up as, as, as a Jew that didn't know Jesus. It was just tradition, you know? And we would go there, but what was beautiful about it, it was the whole family was involved. It wasn't that was, to me, that was the best part. That was the best it part. It was getting together with family, and having children. a meal together, yeah. to the generations together. But for me, uh, the interest or talk or even thought of God didn't even exist, right? My, even though I came from a very orthodox yeah. background, Your, yours was more atheist. Well, a lot of a lot of the family would say, "Hurry up, 
because my grandfather would read the prayer book, the Haggadah. Well, we still did that in Orthodox, right. too. <laughs> but she said, hurry up, we want to eat, you know? But here's the thing. What I realize in this revelation is that on the table, on the table of the Passover, God put a picture shadow of the gospel, of how he was going to really bring in a newer covenant that will actually bring all humanity to himself, that would bring redemption, that would bring us into a new relationship with God, not just knowing God as a holy God, but knowing him as our heavenly father. When, when people get the teaching, they're going to understand this, and it's life-changing. Matter of fact, I taught this to over 300 people once, my Jewish mother included. At the end of it, half of them came forward to receive Yeshua, mm. including my mother. So when Jesus sat down at the Passover, what I saw, he said some unique thing. He says, I have truly desired to eat of this Passover, this particular one with you. That's striking, why? So God started giving this revelation. See, the food was there. In, in Judaism, we're giving a memorial to what God did to free us from a wicked slave master named Pharaoh. God provided a deliverer. His name was Moses. He took them through. The sea parted. He, he, he took them through to the other side. They watched their enemy being destroyed as the water crashed on their heads. But what Yeshua is about to say is, I am the deliverer who God said, Moses, there's a greater prophet coming, and that he's going to be the Messiah, and he will deliver the people from sin. He will deliver the people so I could restore the relationship I had with Adam and Eve before the fall, where I walked in the coolness of the garden with them, where there was intimacy. There was heaven on earth. Sickness couldn't stand. This is what we're talking about, because so many people are going through things, Said right now. They're going through things in their lives, and they're seeing all this stuff, plagues and uh, global plagues and all this stuff, and they're, they're losing hope. Even believers are. So what I'm excited about this revelation of Passover is this. Jesus brought a meaning for all people, for Jews and Gentiles that believe upon him. So here's, here's what would happen. So on the table, this is what I found out. There were three pieces of matzah, and it's a mystery to rabbis, but they say these matzah are achad. The Hebrew word means one. They're unified. Well, I didn't know it, but the matzah stands for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you'll find out. It says right in the New Testament, he took the middle piece of matzah, the Son. Now, if you look at this matzah that Jesus took, this is the first part of the communion. If you look at matzah, it has piercings in it. So there's a visual thing to relate to the body of Messiah. There's stripes in it, burns in it. And by his stripes, the whippings that took place, we are healed. So he broke that and then he distributed this to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. So you're saying there are three matzah, right? Uh, and most Jewish people don't even realize what these three matzah are. are. Uh, but if the first is the Father, the middle is the, the Son, Son, and the third is the Holy Spirit, isn't it interesting? The middle one is the one that is broken. Is broken. And is striped. Right. This I do want to share. There are four cups, even to this day, of the Passover. And these are called the four I wills, the four I wills. God, I will do this, I will do that. The first cup is called the cup of sanctification. Now listen, this is, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Jesus partook of this cup. Well, what he was saying is, I'm gonna bring you out of the burden of what Satan has put upon you. Cup number one. Now cup number two was called the cup of deliverance. This is actually talking about the 10 plagues and all this is talked about. In, but this is saying, I will rescue you from bondage. Well, who's he going to rescue from bondage? You know, it was is Moses did it to rescue us from the bondage and slavery to a wicked slave master. But Jesus was saying, I'm going to rescue from the bondage that you have to Satan because of the original sin, because of the fall of Adam and Eve. Now, after the meal, the third cup was taken. And this is, it talks about this in the New Testament, but most people don't know what it means. Isn't it the cup of blessing? It's the cup of blessing or redemption that Jesus took. He took this cup. Now, this is going to blow you away if you really get this. I will redeem you with outstretched arms. 
That was Jewish. We Jewish people were reading this. Now we're thinking Moses with his staff where he parted the Red Sea. But this is pointing to the ultimate sacrifice of the Passover lamb for all nations, Hmm. Jesus. And the whole thing of Passover is the Jewish people avoided death because they took a lamb, sacrificed a lamb, each household, and they took the blood and put it on the doorposts. And what Jesus was saying in this meal, when you take my blood by believing upon me and the sacrifice I am making as the Passover lamb, and you put it on the doorposts of your heart, receiving me as your Messiah and Lord, you will have eternal life. There's so much more that I wish I could share, but this is just a little bit of the revelation of the mystery of the Passover revealed for the end time believers. And there is one more scripture that is sung at every Passover, Psalm 118, every traditional Jewish Passover. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. I want to introduce you to the one with outstretched arms. The third cup of redemption represents him, the Messiah, the one that is pure love, pure acceptance, the one, the third cup of redemption that is redeeming you of every bad thing you've ever done. I'd like you to say this prayer with me. Remember the peace that Warren's mother had when the little boy just prayed over her? That's the peace God wants to give you. Repeat after me out loud. Dear God. Dear God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe. I believe. That Jesus. That Jesus. Redeemed me from all of my sins. Redeemed me from all of my sins. And because of his blood. And because of his blood. The Passover blood. The Passover blood. Was just a shadow. Was just a shadow. Because of his blood. Because of his blood. My sins are totally wiped away. My sins are totally wiped away. And I am clean. And I am clean. And now that I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. I ask Jesus. I ask Jesus. To come and live inside of me. To come live inside of me. And teach me how to make him my Lord. And teach me how to make him my Lord. Amen. Amen. Daniel, the Jewish prophet, said, the temple would be destroyed after the Messiah died. Now, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. The Messiah had to arrive before 70 AD, die, and have a new temple. But few know what that temple is. I mean, its exact location, where it's hidden. Warren, where is the hidden new location of the temple? What? is its significance. Well, if you read 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that you, if you believe in Yeshua, Jesus as your Messiah and Lord, are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? This is the key. But you see, we, we, we are into tradition. We don't understand the fullness of meaning of that. So we say, oh, I'm God's temple. But there's no power, supernatural power. The glory isn't in the temple unless we invite him to come. And this really is in relationship with Pentecost. On Pentecost, they were waiting in the upper room. They were told to wait. Jesus said God's fire would come upon them, that he would bring the spirit of God upon them, that they might be witnesses to his reality. And so there's a picture I want to show you. There's a picture of the This is Moses' tabernacle in the wilderness. You see the pillar of fire on top of it. What does that mean? Whenever that pillar of fire was there, it was saying God's Shekinah glory was in the Holy of Holies. Well, here's the thing. On Pentecost, they were gathered. And if you notice, there's pillars of fire on their head. In the scriptures, it says, suddenly there was a sound from heaven 
and it was like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house, and they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire, pillars of fire, appeared and settled on each of them. What I want to say to you, Sid, is when that happened, Peter might have been looking at John and said, John, the glory of God is in you. And he said, Peter, no, the glory of God is in you. And they, now what did it say? When the glory came in the tabernacle, Moses couldn't even minister. In Solomon's temple, after it was dedicated, when the glory came in, the priests couldn't stand to minister. That's why they said they were like drunken men. Right. They didn't know, and they just started praising God, and didn't, English didn't come, or Hebrew didn't come out of their mouths, Aramaic. It was, it was many different languages, and all the people that were gathered from different nations heard them speaking praises to God, right? So this is what I'm talking about, you see? We have a form of God that denies the power. I wanted to teach people how they could now be the temples, and we can make ourselves available through this prayer of the cleansing and consecration prayer that God gave me. I call it the glory prayer. He showed me that we have to make ourselves available to be those temples of God. In effect, we're just like the priests, and doesn't the New Testament say the, the least believer? is a priest of God. Exactly. But I want to, I, I really feel, I want to pray for people out there to begin to receive that right now. And so we're going to do it in a simpler fashion. I can't go through the whole thing. You're going to pray a little portion a little of the portion prayer that the we prayer, are giving them. Yes, okay. of the priestly prayer of cleansing and consecration. So right now, we ask you for forgiveness, God, for all of our sins against you. We apply the blood of Messiah to us that we are totally clean before you. And now, Lord, we give you every part of our body, our mind, our hands, our hearts, our mouths, our, 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 our feet, Lord God, that they might be used for your glory and purposes, Lord God. So right now, we just pray that you take us. We want to give ourselves to you willingly, to submit ourselves to you, that we might become the holy temples that your Shekinah glory could come and dwell in. So now, Lord, I ask you to bring the glory, your glory, and begin to put right in us, upon us, within us, and flowing out of us the supernatural power that you have. Right now, they'll just keep, just keep saying this, even when we're off the air, just keep saying, more of you, God, less of me. More, God, more of you, more than ever before. We want more of you, Lord. We don't want to just be ordinary people. We want to be the temples of the living God that you said we are. More of you, and if you have the guts, none of me and all of you, Lord God, just fill me to overflowing. Praise you, Lord. Shanta de Basanto, Garacito. Praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Call now to receive Warren's video DVD, The Priestly Prayer of Cleansing and Consecration, and his accompanying interactive booklet, which contains the entire prayer. Plus, you'll receive Warren's three-part audio CD teaching series, Pressing into the Holy of Holies. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9806. You will receive Warren's video DVD, The Priestly Prayer of Cleansing and Consecration. Warren Marcus shares with you before a live audience that if you are a believer in Yeshua, Jesus as your Messiah and Lord, God has supernaturally fashioned your body to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the tabernacle of Moses, the priests had to set apart vessels of sacrifice for God to use. The brazen altar, the brass laver, the seven-branched menorah, the table of showbread, the altar of incense, and the Ark of the Covenant. Warren teaches you that just as the tabernacle of Moses contained set-apart vessels, so too, your bodily temple has members of your being that also need to be set apart by the blood of Messiah Jesus every day. Your mind, your mouth, your ears, your heart, your feet, and more. You will also receive Warren's daily priestly prayer of cleansing and consecration interactive pamphlet. Plus, you will receive Warren's three-part audio CD teaching series, Pressing into the Holy of Holies. On CD number one, the mystery of Passover revealed for New Covenant believers. You will understand how the food of the Passover meal revealed the entire gospel story in an experiential and powerful way. Discover the meaning of the three pieces 
of matzah on the Passover table as representing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Understand that Jesus used the second piece of matzah, the Son, when He instituted communion. Discover the mystery significance of the four Passover cups of wine and why Jesus used the third cup to represent His blood of the New Covenant. On CD number two, the mystery of the tabernacle in the wilderness revealed. You will learn that Moses' tabernacle was a shadow picture of heaven on earth. And through Jesus, you can now go beyond the courts of heaven and press into the holy of holies of God in heaven. Discover the hidden cross within the tabernacle for telling the sacrifice through which Jesus would eliminate the need for any other sacrifice once and for all. On CD number three, the mystery of believers being God's holy temple and priests. You will understand that you have been fashioned to be God's holy temple on earth. Discover how to operate as a new covenant royal priest with supernatural authority. Join Warren to partake in Passover communion. Warren leads you in prayer to experience the Shekinah glory upon and within your temple. Begin to walk in divine protection, healing, creative miracles, prosperity, and so much more. Don't miss out on getting Warren's video DVD, The Priestly Prayer of Cleansing and Consecration, and his accompanying interactive booklet, which contains the entire prayer. Plus, you will receive Warren's three-part audio CD teaching series, Pressing into the Holy of Holies. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9806. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9806 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.